Hi, this is Priyanka Chopra, and you are watching Channel Y. The biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y. Media Group, established in 2001, is a media company with a 360 degree approach in reaching our audience over five platforms television, radio, newspaper, online news portal, and mobile app. Why Media has newspaper, midweek, radio, South Asian Pulse. Hi, I'm Amitabh Bachchan, and you're listening to South Asian Pulse. Hi, this is Amir Khan, and you're listening to South Asian Pulse. Now, every day, listen to GTA's number one radio station, FM 91.9, all English, 24/7 television network, and Y Media Plus. You are watching Channel Y. Channel Y. Prime Minister, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be back. Online South Asian Daily dot com, the biggest South Asian media group. Why media? Hello everyone, my name is Yudhu Jaswal. I'm the group editor at Y Media. Y Media is bringing you the debates once again. Y Media Political Sensex and we will be covering the Ontario municipal elections this time. We have candidates from Mississauga today. Uh, so I'd like to welcome uh, them one by one. So Isaac, a very warm welcome. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you. Very good to be here. Athena, a very warm welcome. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm well. Saeed, a warm welcome. Thank you. Riyadh, a warm welcome. Thank you and thank you for having us. You are very welcome, sir. And just for the viewers' benefit and for the candidates as well, I'd like to once again explain the format of the debate. Uh, each of you get one minute for your opening remarks and then I'm going to throw in a topic. And feel free to jump in any time. Uh, this is an open format. I'm not going to restrict you to 20 seconds, 30 or a minute or so. But if you could keep it close to a minute or so, your answers, that will be good. And closing remarks of 30 seconds each. Uh, any questions? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> All the best for, uh, for the you. discussion today. <laughs> so at this point, I'll give you each one of you one minute each. So for your opening remarks. Isaac, why don't we start with you? Sure. Hi, my name is Isaiah Bryant and I'm running to be city councilor in Mississauga Ward 9. Over the course of the last few years, Mississauga has gone through many changes. Cost of living has gone through the roof and cost of housing has followed suit. All the while, traffic congestion continues to plague our city's streets. The COVID-19 pandemic has isolated us, and people feel increasingly disconnected from our city hall. I want to change that. I want Mississauga has led the way for many years in, in areas of urban development, built on a strong, forward-thinking vision. Now, as we look ahead to the next 20, 50, even 100 years, I believe the time has come for a renewed vision, for new ideas, and new solutions. Solutions that address our cost of living crisis, solutions that address, that invest in mass transportation, and that empower your voice at City Hall. My hope is that you'll join me in fighting for that vision. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Athena? Hi, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Athena Tajiru, and I am very, very excited about this opportunity. And thank you to Y Media for having us here today in order to you know, express ourselves and for the, your viewers to meet us as well. I have been living in the Mississauga War Three area for 24 years and over this time with, with my family, I'm very involved in the community. I strongly believe in community, community engagement and collaboration between the residents and the city and through Ray Pairs Group this is extremely important in doing so, as well as connecting with our schools and other agencies. Now, I am also the president of the Alpha Hills and Heights Residents Association a local ratepayers group, whereby I have had the opportunity to advocate for the community on various city issues and regional issues. And through that experience, I believe um, it has taught me a great deal on what the concerns the community has and the voice that people need in order to 
you know, to be able to feel valued and welcomed and to be able to enjoy their homes and properties and their livelihood within the city of Mississauga and in Ward 3. Thank you so much, Said. One minute for you. Oh, 30 seconds. One minute, sorry. Sure, one minute. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Said Jeffrey. I'm running for, uh, war, uh, from Ward 2 Mississauga for council position. And uh, I'm a product of a UCLA leadership program. I was a student leader 20 years ago. And then uh, I ran like a lot of uh, campaigns here uh, for MPs, MPPs, and then counselors. And so I have a lot of experience. And then my uh, f uh, issues from Ward 2 are conservation of parks, because you know we have a lot of parks there and want to conserve our environment. And uh, I'm also concerned about the safety and security for our constituents. And uh, we have put down, you know, slow down signs. And then you will see uh, we partnered up with Vision Zero. So uh, that's my second. And the third one uh, is the uh, affordable housing. You know, we want to bring uh, the uh, builders and the city uh, together and to make a coalition to uh, make it happen, you know, and then that will uh, really kind of move forward. All Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Riyad Rahamat, and I'm running for City Council for Ward 2 in Mississauga. I'm a chartered professional accountant by profession or by trade. Um, I've been involved with not just the private sector, but I've been involved with a lot of non-profit organizations all in the 25 years that I've been here in Canada. My vision in, in City Council, if elected, is to make a big change and be a big support and an advocate for small businesses. Small businesses is the lifeline of any city or community. They're the ones who provide jobs, they're the ones who provide the services that we need, and they're the ones who really give us the support when we come to, think about it, a fundraising you go to, who do you go to to get donations, fundraisers. So we need to support small businesses. So I'm a big advocate for small businesses, as well as reducing cost of living, and giving improved or, or, or a housing that is affordable to the young people. Youths is another one that right. I'm advocating for. Thank, thank you. you. Th thank you so much. And at this point, I'm going to bring in a topic here, and then uh, I want to listen from you. Uh, my first question would be, I want to know what is your vision for the city of Mississauga if you get elected in the council? So five years from now, 10, 20, 30 years, what is your vision for the city of Mississauga? Let's go first. A city that is safe, mm -hmm. a city that, that the residents feel valued and welcomed, and then that they have a voice that they're able to engage with their counselor and uh, with the council overall in getting things done, that listen to the voice and the concerns of the residents. Yeah. Uh, my, my vision for this city is that, I, I, you know, you have to hand it credit where credit is due. And people who have gone before have done an amazing job. I mean, there are a lot of things here that we have in this city. But there's a lot more to be done. And my vision would be that we increase our revenue and not just focus on property tax to be 52% of our revenue, as well as cut expenditure. And therefore have more surplus so we can put more programs into place, fund more police officers, more fire department. That is what my vision would be, to make the city a lot more, a lot more programs that are catered towards the youth, as well as increase tourism, <coughs> bring people to visit our cities. Because I'll jump in. So uh, my uh, vision in, in the future is I'm looking into having more town hall meetings. So because, you know, every person has their own personal and then, you know, locational issues. So uh, they bring in their very, very unique issues. So if you have better communication, then we can solve their issues like, you know, step by step. And there will be, uh, you know, a better understanding of municipal <coughs> government. Because a lot of people don't understand what municipal government is all about. They keep asking, like, you know, what party you're running from? And, then, like, you know, you have to explain, like, municipal government is, like, you know, it's nonpartisan. So uh, having a better communication, more town hall meetings, you know, more connection with the people, and that's my uh, vision in the future. Thank you. Uh, for me, the city of Mississauga was built with a very strong vision in the 1970s, and it's not something that we've really, as it's sort of reached its natural expiration date, I think it's time to start rethinking how we approach our urban development. So for me, embracing new types of development like mixed use development, medium density development in areas across the city where we have the space, we're a city that's largely built out. So we need to be thinking how do we use the space that we do have more effectively. If we're going to keep growing and we're going to keep trying to address what's becoming a crisis of cost of living, we need to be saying yes to more developments of this, t of this, of this type. You know, basic supply and demand if you, you know, if you 
build more things and you make more space for affordable housing, people who are at the moment being priced out of the city can afford to live here. So for me, the vision is more affordable housing, more mass, more mass transportation, um, and better and better engaging the community. Because a lot of when I talk to a lot of people, they don't know what a city council is. They don't know what city services are provided, and you know. And people don't vote in these municipal elections because there is no discussion throughout the year about what's going on. So trying to create a discussion is another one of my big planks for City Vision. All right, good to hear that. Yeah, and we'll quickly move on to our next uh, topic, and we're going to talk about affordability now. I know affordability has been on uh, the minds because of the rising inflation, the cost of uh, housing, it's going up even. The rental costs are going so high right now. So affordability is a very important issue. If you get elected as at the council, what are you going to make sure that yes, uh, uh, it, there is some affordability as far as city of Mississauga is concerned, yeah. Yeah. I mean, affordability is a priority of mine. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm a 20 year old, a lot, I'm the youngest candidate in my race and in all the races across the city. And it's people in my generation that are feeling these pinches the most. In fact, it's these people who can no longer afford to live in the city of Mississauga. A lot of people aren't aware of this, but Mississauga was the only major city in Canada to lose population in the last census. And that was before the pandemic, four years before the pandemic, that counts numbers in there. So people are moving out because they just can't afford to. They don't see a future here. So finding ways to address affordability, like for me, embracing more development strategies and making sure that we have more space for affordable housing, especially for young people, is a way that we can, as a city at least, these are steps that we can take municipally. Obviously, there are things that are provincial and federal that would supersede that. But in terms of things we can do right now and right at this level, that, that those are things that I would advocate for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, affordability and cost of living increasing, it's, it's, it's not just restricted to the city or city council. But it's, it's, it's a wider, wider problem. It's, it's provincial and federal, as um, Isaiah had mentioned. And therefore, uh, the way that we need to solve this is we need to work with the provincial government as well as the federal government in putting programs in place. And I'm not talking about programs that like of an incentive base, because that is just a patch onto the problem. We need to find real solutions. Solutions like creating more jobs in the sense that you, 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 the more jobs you create or you support, for example, I was said before, biz, small business. If you give them the small businesses, the, 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 the tools and the equipment, right, so that they can create and bring manufacturing, then you have a whole sort of concept of where it all feeds one into the other, right? And so, um, again, like I said, I'm advocate from the small business, and I see that as being one of the ways in which we can bring or deal with cost of living, because they are the ones who actually making the markups, right? So we need to work with them. Yeah, yeah. anything else you guys want to add or we can move to the next one? Uh, I can just touch base on it. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, to make the, for, for number one priorities of the housing, affordable housing, to make the uh, housing more affordable, uh, you uh, already know kind of when a builder builds a building, they have like a 10% or 15% allocation for affordable housing. So that's what we're working on. And then uh, we just have to expand on it, maybe instead of increase the, uh, you know, percentage from 10, 15 to 30 percent, or maybe even 50 percent in certain areas where there's like a more, uh, you know, like a commercial area where people work and they're going to just uh, go next door and live there. So we ha have to work with the builders and investors. So and then they also have to have an incentive. Why would they invest in affordable housing? So working these uh, programs together, the city has to work uh, in coalition with these investors. So it's bringing all these people together and making a committee like, a, you know, affordable housing committee or affordable um, like it's a society so just uh, and all these elements have to come together so that's uh, what it is I mean that's how we have to kind of uh, tackle all these issues one by one all right all right yeah quickly affordability is definitely a concern I want instant canvassing and speaking with residents uh, mm -hmm. especially the seniors they're saying I don't know how much longer I'll be able to afford to live in the city with the increase in the proper of property taxes so definitely I agree with uh, the suggestion made earlier about working with the provincial and the federal governments and finding programs and incentives I would say as well in order to bring more investment into the city of Mississauga as well as perhaps working to find ways to keep our taxes at a minimum our property taxes that way people will not have this fear of how much longer will this continue? And we have to find ways to uh, make it work for everyone. And especially the seniors who are definitely, they want to be here, but they have to be able to afford to be here. 
All right. Uh, thank you so much. I uh, wish we had more time. We quickly got to move on to our next topic, and that is crime. I know we've uh, recently seen the break-ins, the carjackings, the shootings, the hit and runs. There's so many challenges that we are. Uh, let's not uh, talk too much about the obvious. Let's uh, talk about some solutions as well. So I want to listen. If you get elected to the council, uh, what are you proposing to reduce the crime in the city of Mississauga? You know, through the um, association that I'm involved with, we do we do get crime <coughs> reports, so we see how you know it is not very good at all. What can we do? Working with the youth, creating programs for youth, so they are engaged and they have things that motivate them, <coughs> them going, and working with the community police officers and with the police in order to create a much um, well as best as we can and caring, caring for our community. That has that's extremely important. You know, this is a very difficult issue, <laughs> it really, really is, but we have to find ways to make people feel happy for who they are and where they are, and that way, when people feel good about themselves, that will lead less uh, towards crime. And we have to work with different agencies in order to make that happen. Yeah, so crime, I mean, everybody is of the perception that crime is increasing, and I'm not disputing that, but we just have to categorize which crimes are increasing. If you look at the Peel's public, uh, sorry, the Peel's police website, their statistics reports that things like homicide and robberies are going down year after year in Mississauga. But of course, they also report that um, that uh, carjackings and stuff have been increasing. So the first step in solving this is one, understanding where and which crimes are happening. Secondly, we need to understand the root cause of why it's happening, and and very likely it's because of the high cost of living that is forcing people to get into crime. That is usually the main, one of the main reasons why people do crime. High cost of living, they can't afford, they have to provide for their family, so they find a means of which to do that. As that mean, that it causes. Now, one of the solutions that I would propose would be to get the community or the, the, the communities involved with high def cameras. Offer incentives to households to put high def cameras in place, because that is one of the leading things that helps solve crime. If you have a high def camera that can actually seize. And I'm not talking of, uh, cameras or video that is for the, the police to be monitoring. That means additional police resources to sit and monitor this. I'm talking about putting it in the hands of the community where your cameras are the ones going to be used. You have incentive to install it. You're going to use that if something happens, a carjacking, whatever, in the neighborhood. Yeah. A solution, I guess, that I would have for the crime problem, I mean, obviously it's not an all-encompassing one, but many years ago in Meadowvale, the community that I live in and I'm running to represent, there was a community police station in the Meadowvale Town Center, which was removed a few years ago. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion, as crime rates have been discussed, of possibly of bringing it back, because as, a, as it stands, the nearest one is a decent drive away, um, much further south on Dundas, so it's, it's a ways. People, you know, there's a bit of a disc... I see with all sorts of city services, but the police especially, there's a disconnect between the citizens and the, and, and the city services. People don't feel represented by the police. If the police were there in the community and they were a visible part of the community and they were a constructive part of the community, I think there would be a lot of steps in terms of getting people on board with each other and the police would provide a more effective service and the citizens would be more willing to engage with them. So bringing that community station back would be my first priority and then working to address the other issues as, as they come about. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anything else? Yeah, just to uh, follow up on Isaiah's idea, because those are the same ideas I have. Um, you know, I ran from that ward before. And then there was a community, uh, like a police station there. They, they removed it. And even before that, there was a community a liaison from, uh, from police. It used to be uh, in high schools, and they used to kind of break down the gangs and keep an eye. So that was taken off. So these programs have to uh, come back. And, like, and another thing, uh, my friend uh, from Ward 11, he, what he did, he brought police and the community together. He formed an organization called Crime Stoppers. So they were just uh, you know, together, uh, and then they were just discussing how to you know, compete, uh, like, uh, just work on uh, like, uh, different issues uh, with each other. And uh, again, you, you know like these programs are uh, you know, neighborhood watch programs, so they're like, few of them and then you have to just kind of keep uh, bringing more and more of these and they will only uh, happen if you bring um, the community and the police together so programs like crime stoppers and whatnot and then meetings and the stations uh, these are the solutions and that's what we have to kind of strive for 
All right, I wish we had more time, but very interesting thoughts on this one. Quickly, we're going to move to our next topic, and that is uh, integration. Uh, why we're we talking about this integration? Because uh, we're seeing some very populist statements being made by many leaders across the globe, and they're making divisive statements as well. So, uh, Canada, uh, we have people from different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different languages are being spoken. So, we do not want identity politics to be played here. So, here are, we have future leaders. I want to listen to your ideas, your thoughts. How can we bring people together? The inclusiveness. How can we make sure that, yes, we're focusing on the common denominators, whether it's education, infrastructure, innovation, healthcare, this is what we want to stay focused on rather than the divisive politics that we see sometimes. So what are your thoughts on this one? Well, one way that I think we already do in Mississauga is by having the event of Karasaga, which is an amazing multicultural event. People, you know, host their country that they represent. So allowing programs like that to continue and to, you know, fund such initiatives, as well as having, you know, like welcome, welcoming programs within the city is great. And also the settlement uh, facilities that, that we have in the city are also very good at reaching out to the community. So just building on those, creating more initiatives through those, I think is a great way to make people uh, welcomed and to, to want to be a part of the community as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think for me, um, a lot of people, especially newcomers, don't feel particularly represented well by our city services and our city government. There's a bit of a disconnect. When I talk to voters at the door, they don't really know. It's not that they don't understand, they just, it seems like there's a distance between city services and all that. So trying to get, trying to, you know, champion the voices of people who aren't traditionally represented on the council or in city um, offices, you know, trying, being more open and transparent as a city and providing ways to give platforms to people to actually feel represented and feel like they have a voice and as to what goes on in the government, I think will go a long way of getting all sorts of people and all sorts of real meaningful change in voices heard, so. Okay, go So, um, when it comes to diversity, uh, clearly we need to, <laughs> we have a very diverse community. Um, that, uh, about the, 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 the having the events, I am in full agreement with that that we need more events like that, more international events, because it uh, creates awareness, and awareness would more sort of introduce people as to what it is and why it is, where we come from, and how our culture, uh, you, know, had, you know, goes about. But the other part of it is that we need to have programs in schools, and I know there are some to an extent, but we need to expand on those things, or create more awareness about the diversity starting in our schools. And um, that is where, it, you know, we can deal with it from the, the students or the, the, the kids coming up. But for the new immigrants coming up, they're right. There is a big disconnect coming into this country, right? Because even on your application, you get points for having family here who will help integrate you, which means that you're passing off that integration to, your fa to the people's family. And guess what? If I'm coming from India, I'm sorry, if I'm from the Caribbean, so let me use the Caribbean. If I come from the Caribbean and I have to have, uh, uh, in my application, I have to have family here before I come, then guess what? I'm going to be ending up into that f same Caribbean culture here in Canada and stick with that. I, I'm not going to be exposed to anything other than that because you're bringing me into my own culture here. And that, again, is, you know, is still creating the divide. We need to address that by putting programs in place. Yeah, I'm going to throw in another uh, point here and then hear your thoughts and then we'll do, uh, wrap up and move to the last topic uh, for, for the discussion. Uh, as you were mentioning programs, which, which, are, which are great, but uh, if, if we're doing a program within our own community, any XYZ community, you know, and what happens usually this is what we see in media, what happens is an XYZ community is doing a program and mainly, uh, you know, those are the people who are leading that program, they're getting funding from city, they're getting funding from federal level, the provincial level, and we talk about multiculturalism. There's some photo of we in the media get pictures. We publish that in our newspapers. We show our programs on our TV. All done. But my question is: This X Y Z, which race communities there? Are we bringing any people from other communities? Are there any strings attached? Are we holding them accountable? So just merely doing programs well within their own community may not really integrate. How do we bring? together because that's that's happening a lot but throwing extra dollars okay you organize a program there okay mm -hmm. how many people uh, i mean if you're not from italian descent do you know when is italian heritage month mm -hmm. how many people know when is the black history month when is the south asian 
uh, it's two months. So mm -hmm. we need to bring people together. That's how you integrate. Yeah, yeah, let me ahead. take the lead on that. So that's ahead. exactly what I was gonna, I was gonna say. Uh, when you have like these cultural events, you know, it's specific to a certain ethnicity, what we need to do is recognize it at a, at a municipal level and bring people from other cultures to introduce, you know, their culture. So that's how it's supposed to be. And I've seen it, you know, they, uh, the city has taken the initiative at, um, uh, I mean, if I, you go to City Hall, they have uh, I mean, these events going on and then you just ha you have to go a step further and kind of recognize it as, let's say, like a day of Diwali, you know, Indian culture, and you have to bring other cultures and kind of introduce, uh, you know, the, their culture and then uh, just kind of like a, like a whole uh, dialogue. So you have to yeah, go a step further and then kind of have it, uh, uh, I mean, at, at a higher level, I would say, even provincial level, you know, bring somebody big from the government, like uh, uh, mayors from other cities and then other, uh, invite other ethnicities who have similar events and whatnot. So yeah, I mean, we have started on the right foot, but they just have to be taken to the next step. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right, yeah, go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Canada is a pluralistic society. Mississauga is one of the most diverse cities in the world. You know, and I, 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 I want to see, you know, there are barriers between the communities and I want to see those barriers breaking down. You know, so yeah, like embracing those, uh, not just the programs, but trying to actually get people from other communities into those events. But you know, again, I, it really is, to me, it does come down to representation. If people feel represented, they're going, people are, and they can engage with the general structure, they'll, in, they will integrate with the society around them and they will get to know people from all sorts of other cultures. So yeah, but that would, so again, just focusing on that, those are the things that I think, you know, would help, you know, create a more, yeah, I guess, generally diverse society. All right. Yeah. And people feel that they can identify with wherever they go and whatever group. Now, another thing that I'd like to mention, which I feel is very important, is that yes, we have a, a country which has welcomed us. Canada has opened its, its doors and it said, you're welcome to come and lead the life that you, you have left behind and you know, start a new life here in Canada. So in this integration and having our diverse communities represented, we also have to remember that this is our new home and we have a multicultural community which is really dynamic and beautiful, just like as we are represented here today. And also um, be very aware and appreciative of the host country, which is now our new home country. All right. Go ahead. So, you, as you mentioned, programs and being there, just as a clarification, when I talked about the programs, I was talking about like the um, Carry Saga, where it's an international uh, event when we, it's on the event side. So, the events we were talking about more of is more international. So, you have the mixing of the cultures coming in, right? And maybe not just for one weekend, but maybe over a couple of days, a week, or whatever it is, right? Um, and so, that when it comes. When it comes to the media, uh, you're right. There are a lot of little stations popping up, not just as TV stations, but radio stations that are popping up specific to the, each culture and each uh, you know segment of the, the community. But uh, in, uh, to solve that from a, a, a city perspective or a provincial perspective, it would mean implementing requirements and, 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 and rules that you have to abide by that you must now include people from different cultures on your program. And I'm not too sure how that's going to go over with different by me as a, as, as a government or as a city saying, you have to now include that. That is why I would throw that back on you guys as the media to start taking the initiative on that and start inviting people of different cultures to your program. Create programs that are of different cultures and you create the opportunity. You are part of, you need to be part of the solution. <laughs> that's my take on that. <laughs> Good point. So, so that's a good point. That's a good, two a points. Good point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, two points on this one. Yeah. Actually, CRTC already mandates that. It's already any radio station like CRTC, whenever there's a multicultural programming. Right. So CRTC already mandates that, okay, this many hours for this programming, this many hours for this programming. So, and CRT basically governs that. So you have to bring in people from different backgrounds. You have to bring in people from different languages. So it's Urdu programming, Greek, Greek programming, as you just mm -hmm. mentioned, I have very good friends in, uh, right. or from Greek origin, Italian programming, Spanish. As a matter of fact, on our uh, radio program that I do, Radio YFM 91.9, we have on uh, Radio YFM 91.9 and we have around uh, 17 hours of Hindi, Punjabi, Urdu programming, around 2-3 hours of Spanish, we have Italian, we have Tamil on that one. So we have all, we have all that. So, so CRTC already does that. Good. Now to your second point, which you just said again, uh, there's another point. Today uh, in our meeting this morning, I was discussing as a group editor and we took out this mandate. Uh, why media takes pride that we are the only media house in Canada? 
Why Media is the only organization in Canada which is doing debates in Toronto, Mississauga, Oakville, and Brampton. And we're trying to get other cities as well. As of now, the Brampton Board of Trade, they do debates only for Brampton. The Toronto Board of Trade, they only invite candidates from Toronto. CP24 or any other mainstream media, if at all they broadcast any debate, <laughs> that is only for Toronto. <laughs> there is nothing for Mississauga. Right there is nothing, no media outlet is doing anything for Brampton. So that's why we took upon right, us awesome. already. And you're right. And okay. it was such, uh, you know, it was such a nice experience. It was a great experience. It was so refreshing to meet people from different ethnicities, background, cultures, and more importantly, more importantly, we get a different perspective. Someone comes in and they tell us right here in Mississauga what's happening at Scarborough. Right. Then you have someone coming up telling us what happens in Markham, what happens in Mississauga, Oakville, Brampton. So it's a very interesting discussion and, and it was, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that, that, that's a good point and I'm glad, I'm glad. I want to congratulate you for taking that initiative, you know, of, of trying to invite different cultures. I, I, I congratulate you and I applaud you for that. Um, coming back to your point about where you're regulated, that you must have a certain amount of hours of programming from different cultures. Yeah. That, you see, again, coming back to my point, you can put those things in place. But at the end of the day, you know what happened? And I'm talking from personal experience here. That's why I can say this, is that sometimes a culture who may, they don't want on their station, they price their program out of range. So for you to call them, for me to go to them and say, hey, listen, I need to have a program here. They quote me a high price so that you can't afford to have a program on my station. I'm just saying, you know, that, that is, I'm not saying that is across the board. I'm just saying that that is a tactic that is used. But I, I really want to applaud you for taking that initiative of bringing the cultures together. Thank you, thank you. That that uh, that could be an isolated incident, and yes, and, and I'm so be. I'm so sorry to hear that. But uh, yeah, but but the uh, I've been doing radio for good. I would say 20 years now, and uh, I've been basically working at four different uh, stations uh, here here in the GTA uh, on this one. But the price has been very consistent. I, I know because I've not only worked as a host but as a producer as well. So the price point is very much consistent. Maybe. I don't know why somebody did that, yeah, but but anyway, this was a few years ago. Maybe yeah, we got change. Yeah, <laughs> if we could move to our next topic. But thank you. This is uh, this is the part that was just referring to so much insight, so much discussion, great ideas. Thank you, uh, thank you for that. Our last topic for the day would be. I wish we had more time. You know, maybe we'll invite you after uh, the elections as well. Uh, you know, to discuss all these ideas. Our last topic for uh, the day would be uh, youth and seniors. I want to hear your ideas. What is your plan for our youth and for seniors? Who wants to go first? Youth, I think we need a lot more programming, a lot more activities that okay. be prepared by the city in order to address the, the needs of the, the, the youth, especially in areas where there are many parents who are working during their daytime, students come home from school, mom and dad are not home, there's no family at home, so those children need to be engaged, not by sitting in front of a TV, or I'm sorry, now it's the laptops, the phones, but going to activities that will be there and available for them without having to take buses and all, something local within the community, which is very important. And seniors, we need, we need to, the city has many programs for seniors, we just have to connect to the seniors to make them aware and find ways for them to be able to participate. That's what I think needs to be done at, at that level. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, I sort of agree with that point. There are plenty of programs that the city provides that people just are not in the loop about. The city does a very poor job of representing itself and getting those services out there. But when I when I'm talking about all night about this disconnect, that's part of it. That's the biggest part because people just don't know what the city provides. Mm -hmm. And young people are also feeling a disconnect. They don't feel connected to Mississauga's identity or anything like that. They feel as though you know this is just you know a suburb. We'll go someplace else and where it's less expensive or we'll live someplace that has more urban infrastructure, whatever that might be, whatever they're looking for. You know, I, what I want to do is I want to make, I want to say, no, young, young people like myself, I grew up in Mississauga, Mississauga is my home and I want to do whatever I can to make this a better place. So how can we make young people feel welcome here, feel like that this is a place that they can live, grow, start a family, you know, so that, so trying to get you know, programs to get people, you know, involved, young you know, work programs, we can promote internships at the city, things like that, getting people connected in this community, um, young people connected in this community especially. And yeah, for seniors, just again, increasing awareness of those programs and just getting the word out better, however we can do that through mailing lists or through going door to door, even hiring people that can represent the city like 
like we go door to door in our cam campaign to tell people about ourselves. Why don't we do that after the campaign to tell people about what the city does and what the city can do for our seniors and what the city can do for our people in general. Exactly. So those would be the sort of things that I would sort of support. Yeah, all right. So I had a, um, I want to just uh, kind of uh, kind of expand on that. So my, uh, like last time I ran, I, that was my uh, dream that I, I would like to have like a big uh, complex, uh, like uh, let's call it Hazel McCallion Sports Complex. That would implement like you know, sports programs for uh, young people and then have like uh, other programs for seniors as well. And it will be like an icon, so bring the people together. And as I mentioned, you know, these programs sometimes they're not uh, uh, seen, they're not like, uh, they're overlooked and people don't even know they exist. So the, if you have an icon, like, let's say like a sports complex, people, you know, will come together, they'll ask, you know, what this sports complex has to offer. So if they find out, hey, there's a program for kids, program for youth, program for seniors, so it's like a one place has everything together. So bring people together will be an icon and they'll make the city grow well and then will really bring the youth uh, in, in, in strength again. And again, same thing, you know, it will uh, reduce uh, crime or violence and whatnot. And again, you know, the, the police will be our friends and, you know, it will be like a big meeting place. So, so that's my dream for that. Good Thank question. you. So there was a study done by Peel's Children Youth Initiative, if I'm not mistaken. And they did exactly that. That study was to find out what is occupying the youth's time, mm -hmm. what more they want to see out there, and, and, and to try and solve the problem, and for, or at least get an idea from the youths themselves. And they, 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 the study covered, I think it was about 2,000 or so high school students. Can you guess what is the number one thing that they said that they wanted to see in terms of programs? Take a guess. In terms of programs for yeah, the city? in terms of programs for, for the after school programs for the youths. It was cooking. Oh, cooking. Wow. Right, cooking was the number one thing that they wanted to see more of. You know what was one of the biggest uh, uh, problems that they had why they weren't attending programs after school? Because of transportation. Problems getting to the program. Another part of it was that people said that they, they didn't have uh, programs that interested in, were of interest to them. Okay, so when you look at that study, it gives a very good insight of what it is. I, um, to tell you the truth, I would have never thought cooking would have been number one on that list, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but it just shows that what we think might be the problem, we need to actually engage the youths themselves to understand what they think and what they want and provide that to them. <laughs> All right, that's a very good point. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, you want to add something? Yeah, community yeah, engagement is extremely important. You know, Absolutely. connecting with the rape peers group, going out, as Isaiah said earlier, mm -hmm. and talking to the residents even after the election, and just like you're canvassing prior to, go out there and talk to the residents. Okay, I'm here now. What can we do to work together so we can make our vision for our community as best as possible? All right. Yeah, I would say yeah. uh, door knocking should be part of uh, like everyday activity yes. for a counselor. Because, yeah. you know, <laughs> if you're starting from the beginning, this is what's yeah. making you win, then you should carry it on. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, now these are very good ideas. Wish we had more uh, time. And at this point, I'll give you 30 seconds each for your uh, closing remarks. And on behalf of Y Media, I'd like to thank each one of you for parting, participating in today's discussion. It was more of a discussion, and this is what we want to uh, keep the format as a conversation style. Uh, 30 seconds. Sure. So again, I want to thank Y Media for having us here to listen to what we have to say. And I want to thank you, the audience, for looking at the program to give me, of course, trying to get the information to make the right decision when coming to voting on October 24th. Guess what? If you live in Ward 2, I am the right choice. No, no disrespect to my <laughs> fellow <laughs> running mate here, but I am the right choice. Vote for me, Ward 2, Mr. Saga, on October 24th, or before if you're doing uh, yeah, voting, uh, early voting. Okay, for the final remarks, I'll just say, you know, just look at everyone's experience. Uh, I'm like the balanced choice, uh, you know, not too young, not too old. I have uh, uh, 20 years of experience of leadership. I was trained as a student leader and I, you know, carried on so many campaigns and I am a neurogenetic scientist and then you know I can uh, make things happen so I would say hey I'm your right choice and you know vote for me <laughs> <laughs> October 24 remember <laughs> Sayyid Jaffrey Ward 2 Mississauga thank you thank you yes thank you again to Y Media for this opportunity and one of the reasons why I decided to run for the position of counselor in Ward 3 is because I strongly believe we need to change 
We need a change for a new voice at City Council. After 12 years of having the same council, uh, councilor who has been elected consecutively, we will need a new voice to represent the people of Ward 3, a voice that they deserve, and a change that we need in our community. So on October 24th, or at the advanced polls, please vote for Athena as your new councilor for Ward 3. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'd also like to thank Y Media for the opportunity. I mean, it's very important that, you know, for allowing candidates like myself and everybody else who's come today, you know, to share their views and to have this, you know, discussion and actually keep a debate going, have some sort of real discussion about the issues. Um, and that's what's really always been important to me, and that's getting, having, starting a conversation and, you know, getting people involved in places where they don't feel traditionally represented. Um, I, I really do believe very firmly in a vision for this city, a renewed vision for this city, one that is looking forward and not just reacting to the challenges that we're having, because we do face a lot of challenges. But I, I do believe that uh, I am uniquely equipped as a young person to face these challenges in ways that may not necessarily be conventional, but ways that I believe will deliver real results for this city. So on October 24th, I would strongly implore you to vote for Isaiah Bryant in Ward 9. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was uh, really nice talking to all of you and I wish all of you all the best. Thank you so much and I look forward to carrying on the discussion after October 24th as well. I will take you up on Thank that. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and all these debates will be broadcasted on Rogers 857, Bell 828, Telus 2418, Ignite 707. You can also download our app, Y Media TV, and you can visit us at y.media. You don't have to put .com there, just y.media. The phone number is there on the screen, just in case you need to know when these debates will be broadcasted. Any uh, discussion about Y Media or any question, feel free to call us at 416. 475 5000. That's all the time that we have today. Stay tuned with Y Media. Hi, this is Priyanka Chopra, and you're watching Channel Y. The biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y Media Group, established in 2001, is a media company with a 360 degree approach in reaching our audience over five platforms television radio, newspaper, online news portal, and mobile app. Why Media has newspaper, midweek, radio, South Asian Pulse. Hi, I'm Amitabh Bachchan and you're listening to South Asian Pulse. Hi, this is Amir Khan and you're listening to South Asian Pulse. Now, every day, listen to GTA ka number one radio station, FM 91.9. All English, 24-7, television network, and Why Media Plus. Watching Channel Y. Channel Y. Prime Minister, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be back. Online SouthAsianDaily.com, the biggest South Asian media group. Why media? Why?